Thank you, Holy Spirit. Discipleship. Jesus in his ministry had established leadership to help him serve God. And also to help him accomplish the mission and the mandate God gave him. What I want to teach today is very brief and very dear to my spirit that I want you to pay attention. Just like in Shalom, there is a mandate and God has brought you in this ministry this time for a reason. I pray the reason with which God brought you here will be accomplished in Jesus' name. God brought you to be a blessing to the ministry, also to bless you. Not only to bless you, but also you to be a blessing to the ministry. I pray both will come to pass in Jesus' name. I pray both will come to pass in Jesus' name. The reason with which God brought you here, one is to bless you and one for you to be a blessing. Amen? And I pray both of them should come to pass in Jesus' name. There are a few things that I want to say. When you are supporting a vision, you don't need to delay. When you are supporting a vision, you don't need to do what? To delay. A woman or a man supporting a vision is like a driver of an ambulance carrying a pregnant woman to go and deliver. If you delay on the road, the child or the mother or both of them can die. A driver carrying a woman to hospital for delivery is like a man or a woman carrying a vision and supporting a vision. And you must be very sensitive and very swift because any little delay can cause a death of both or one. Amen. I want to talk from two dimensions. One is from the church dimension. Two is from the family dimension. I spoke with my father, biological, and we were born nine and three are dead, six are alive. Listen to me carefully. And my father was a pastor like me. So when we were growing up, everybody messed like it could be in their youth. And at some point, God arrested all of us and by the grace of God, we are fully born again now, all of us. Amen. Everybody with a challenge, everybody with their testimonies like that, but God has helped us. So I asked my father, what would make somebody grow old and begin to have children disobey him? His own children that he brought up the best way he knows. And he told me, what would make a child rebel against their parents is a seed their parents sow in the life of other people. And he told me, be careful how you treat people God bring your way. Because every man God brings your way or every woman has a reason why God is bringing them. And how you treat them will be manifested in the life of your children. And he said from the age of 15 to the age of 25, when your children get there, that is when you will know if you treated people well or if you mistreated people. Because your own daughters and your own sons will begin to turn against you at an age when you can't beat them, at an age where you can't do nothing about it, but you don't like it, but you have to carry it. It's my prayer that even as you listen to my teaching today, may God you give you grace to handle people who God bring you away with care. Amen. I don't like the men in this church. As I pray, I pray God give you grace to handle people with care. Amen. There's a story in my village of a small lake. I'm teaching on discipleship. Listen to me. We call that Lake Simbi. It's called Lake Simbi. Lake Simbi, for those who did history, is few kilometers from my home is a walking distance. They say the history behind this lake was an old woman was passing by the village somewhere in Kindube near Lake Victoria. 
It's a small lake near Lake Victoria. So it's just a small, it's not a big lake. It is a home stage that they say sunk. Listen to this story very carefully. There's a point I'm bringing home. They say the home that caused a village to sink, to sink, that an old woman was passing by that village and it started raining and she went to seek for shelter. And the man and the family sent her away. And for some reasons, I was told she spoke words. It's in the history, so we don't know how true it can be. But let's pick a, a, a lesson from it. They say when the woman walked out of the home, she warned everybody not to sleep in that home. But by reason of ignorance and stubbornness, the nature of a man is practically to prove a point even when they shouldn't prove a point. So they wanted to prove to stubborn and when the woman walked out of that home, they say that home sank with everything that was inside that home. I've been there once. I've had the testimony and the, the history. We can't substantiate but the message is, you don't know who God is bringing you away. And they say the home that was willing to welcome, that welcomed the woman, is one of the blessed homes in the entire area. Uh, there's a name if I call many of us who not connect. And that village, there is only particular home that is blessed till tomorrow. And they say, this is the home that welcomed the woman that was rejected by the other home. And they say the entire home physically sank. And now the place is an ocean, is a sea, is an ocean. Somewhere you can, you know, sail with a boat. But they say it's not advisable you swim because nobody knows how deep it is. Praise God. <clears throat> oh, mama took me off the balance. Amen. I'm still trying to recover. It's very heavy. Amen. So I was talking to my father in the Lord and many of you are now asking who. From next year I will make it clear. Amen. There is no hurry. Praise God. And I was sharing with him the same. And I told him my biological father to whom is also a spiritual mentor told me this and he said anybody God bring into your ministry God brings them for a reason. some to teach you a lesson and some that you may teach them a lesson. So it complicated my life, Father. And I said, how do you know this one is coming into your life to teach you a lesson? And he gave me a reason that I would want to share here. Basic thing, anybody even in church who is sitting by your side is not by mistake. Even as we are seated here. There are many people here who you are married to the woman you are married to because of a man that took you somewhere and you met that woman. Is that true? Many of us, you are working somewhere because somebody connected you to that work. Most of us, like I keep saying, we are in Nairobi because somebody brought us to Nairobi or connected us to Nairobi. For one reason or another, every human being you meet in life is for a reason. Now the question remains, how do you treat the people? It may not manifest in your life, but your children at some point will show you who you are to your people around. I pray, may you be good to people. Just look at your men. I pray you be good to people. So when your children get to a certain age, they can pay you back what you sowed as a seed. Amen. Praise God. I told a man the same thing I'm telling you here. And he told me, Prophet, you have told me a word of the year. Because I've been asking questions. Why? Because his children had entered into drugs and he have got three children, two girls and one boy. And he says his children are even smoking weed in the room. And as a mother, as a father, when you learn your daughters, you are two daughters biological, as turned to be lesbians in your own room. And one is dating the other. As a parent, that thing cannot leave you stable. 
So when she calls me because she's a partner of the ministry and say, Prophet, you have to pray for me, what has come to my attention, I can't, I don't know how I will tell my husband. And this is the word. I said, okay. So the, that's the reason why now to ask my father, what I have, what causes these issues? Because I needed a senior, a senior bone to, to answer this question. I said, what would lead a husband or a wife to bring their children in a godly way? Because they say they gave birth to their children in church brought their children up in church and the children have get to age now a sister the elder sister is the boyfriend of the younger sister and all of them smoke inside the room he said he thought it happens in the neighborhood until they learned it happens in their own house under their roof and my father told me in most cases is how they treated people when they were growing and how they have treated people is what now God has brought back to them. And when I told them this, they said, man of God, you have answered our question for the whole year. Listen. Forget everything I will say. Remember this one. Everybody, God bring your way. How you meet doesn't matter. How you part ways matter. Because remember the bridge you cut tomorrow you may need it to cross. Because we forget quickly how we met when we are separate, you know, in a parting ways. Am I communicating something? But if you would go back into how we met before we part ways, you would value, even if you wanted to part, you don't do what you want to do. Even if you have a friend in this church that you met because of church, please don't mistreat them. A man is here, a woman is here who God can use to help you. You don't know the ability of your neighbor. You don't know the grace your neighbor carries. Did I say something? Look at your neighbor and ask them, did you hear? If your neighbor is not asking you, they are not serious with you, look for one who is serious and ask them, did you hear? Did they answer you? Did you hear what I said? Did they answer you yes or no? <clears throat> Discipleship. I want to teach you 10 facts about discipleship. Number one, this is our last Sunday, this side, as we wait for, wait for grace to take us the other side. So, our thanksgiving will be done here, and we are believing God by the time we finish, we'll be able to now be ready to move. Because time will not allow us to move by next week by reason of preparation. Number one thing you need to know as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you will be fought as a disciple. But have a mind that you, are, you will fight regardless. Fight back. Go back and continue preaching. Meaning, don't give up because you are, you are beaten. Don't give up because you are put into prison. Go back and still continue doing what? The reason why you are arrested. Are you following what I'm saying? Uh huh. And when they had that, when they had that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. They knew going back there will cause them to be beaten, will cause them to be arrested. But at the voice of an angel, they still obeyed regardless. They knew going back there is going to cause us to be beaten again, be arrested again. But because that says the Lord, we will go back again. May God give you wisdom to obey his voice. I pray may God give you wisdom to obey his voice. We are all disciples of Jesus Christ. Now listen. Uh -huh. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together mm. with all the elders of the children of Israel mm -hmm. and sent to the prison to have them brought. Mm. To be arrested again. So, but when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, ah. they returned and reported. When they had these people who are in prison already preaching somewhere, they say no, they cannot be the same people. Going to prison, they are the ones we are talking about are in prison. So when they went to prison, they confirmed it is true. They have been removed. They are not in prison again. Uh huh. Saying. I know this indeed, side doesn't have a screen. It's okay. Uh huh. Saying, indeed, we found the prison shut securely. It is well locked the way we left it. And the guards standing outside before the doors. And the guards are in the at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. But we were surprised that when we opened our padlocks, there was nobody inside. The angel of the Lord came by night to remove them. Uh -huh. Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, when they heard this news, they wondered what, had, what the outcome would be. Mm. 
So one came and told them, saying, So one told them, Look, look the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. As you are looking for them here, they are doing the same thing you arrested them yesterday from doing. Mm -hmm. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence. Mm. For they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. It was because they did not fear God, they feared people, not that. Uh -huh. And when they had brought them, when they had brought them, they set them before the council, uh, and the high priest asked them, asked them a question, saying, saying, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? The problem we arrested you yesterday because you are preaching this same name. And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, uh -huh. and intended to bring this man's blood on us. Uh huh. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, They say, We ought to obey God rather than men. We have chose to obey the voice of God than your voice. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Okay. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, mm. to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Mm. And we are his witnesses to these things. And, and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Verse 33. When they heard this. They were furious and plotted to kill them. They were very angry. They thought they would give up. And because they were not giving up, the anger and the fury goes up. Uh -huh. Then one in the council stood up. Gamaliel. A Pharisee, a Pharisee named Gamaliel. Mm. A teacher of the law held in respect by all the people. Most reputable. And commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little, for a little while. Okay. And he said to them, mm. Men of Israel, take heed to yourself what you intend to do regarding this man. Check what you want to do about this man. Before you do it, check very well. Uh-huh. For some time ago... Theodos rose up claiming to be somebody. Mm. A number of men, about 400, joined him. Mm -hmm. He was slain and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. Correct. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of census mm. and drew away many people after him. Yeah. He also perished and all who obeyed him were dispersed. Uh -huh. And now I say to you. Uh, from those experiences of the two, now I want to tell you. From this man and let them alone. For and this man, leave them alone. Jesus is on their side. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. If this work they are doing, Peter and the other disciples, is of men, it will come to nothing. But, but if it's of God, but if it is of God, you uh, cannot overthrow it. You can do nothing about it. Lest you even be found to fight against God. You may be found fighting God, thinking you're fighting his man. And they agreed with him. They came into agreement. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, mm. they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Now I like that bit. They still took the counsel of Gamaliel for not doing them harm, not arresting them, but still they beat them. That is human beings. They will say, we will leave you but not in peace. We will make sure you carry some bruises. We will not arrest you, but you must remember our meeting. It's <laughs> finish. Verse 41 and verse 42. So they departed from the presence of the council, uh -huh. rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. After apostles were flogged, after disciples of Jesus were tortured, they left celebrating because we are found worthy to be dealt with because you are preaching gospel. Ha! I thought they would leave complaining. Give me verse 40, 41 before you finish. So they departed from the presence of the council. After being flogged. Rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. May you be counted worthy because you have suffered for the name of the Lord. I don't like a man. I say may you be counted worthy. Because you went through all you went through because of the name of the Lord Jesus. As a disciple of Jesus, verse 42, before we close that bit. And daily in the temple ah. and in every house, ah. they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. After all they went through, they went doing 
door to door. Still preaching Jesus as the Christ. And they were happy about it. Listen to me. If you are persecuted because you are preaching Christ, crucified, be happy about it. If you realize that your family is not in agreement with you because you are born again and you do you do church and you are serious and they say, "Uyo mama me olema kanisa, uyo mzee kijua kemeruka." Because of God, count it celebration. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, if you want to make heaven, you must know. Don't be surprised. You'll be fought. But get ready to fight back till you win because the kingdom suffered violence. And those who are violent, take it by force. So if you want to sit and wait and watch, you will be a failure. Am I communicating something? Am I communicating something? Now follow me. Number two. Number one, I said no for certainty. You'll be fought. Don't give up. Fight back. Number two. As a disciple of Jesus, know that people will criticize you. But get used to it. People will criticize you. Get used to it. <clears throat> People will talk negative against you. Even themselves, they know what they are saying about you is not true. But because they are in the spirit of talking, they must talk against you. Get used to it. It's true to hurt you as a human, but get used to it. Ah, she's going to that church. Oh, that church has this and that. Oh, I heard that pastor is this like that. Oh, I heard in that church, there's a, a son of this church gave a testimony of how his family fought him from coming to this church. And he said his family were thinking that this is a church of class, so they, he shouldn't come here. <gasps> I should be happy about that. You should be happy about that. When people talk against your God, not because you offended them in any way, but because you are doing what God wants you to do as a sister, as a brother, and they are not happy about it. That is the motivation to even do more. Praise the Lord forever. You have not served God until your own people turn against you because you are serving God. Can I say it again? You have not served God until your own people turn against you because you are serving God. People will talk about you. You go to do evangelism. You are telling somebody, for example, I want to invite you to church. He's looking at the flyer. One of my daughters who was doing evangelism told me, she gave an envelope, a, a flyer to somebody. Now we are going to picture. I can be a pastor. I want a pastor who is mature. 50 years and above. You want, there are so many. Why didn't you go to a place? Don't tell us you want. You know where they are. That is a way to, to make the pastor's heart to be heavy from doing evangelism. Is a word to discourage you from talking to the next person. Am I communicating? The devil's target is to discourage you so that you feel heavy. You say, I wake a flag or bag rudi banyomba. Say this person has spoiled my day. Amen. We are not going out to win arguments. We are going out to win souls. So once I realize you carry you want to do politics, I'm not part of it. Jesus died for everybody, including myself and you. So I'll tell you the will of God. You want to follow, follow. You don't want to follow. We wait for rapture in Jesus' name. People will criticize you and your church. Get used to it. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, get used. Because if you don't get used, you'll be heartbroken. Am I communicating now? Am I communicating now? Number three thing you need to know as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you will suffer the worst. We don't tell people these things, but I think it's necessary we tell you because we go to serving God only thinking of positive things. Oh, you shall drive cars. Amen. You shall own houses you did not build. Amen. It's written. Am I communicating? You shall fly, go abroad. Amen. Thank you. 
But know very well you'll also suffer. Simple. Be prepared so that when you suffer, you say, I thank God, this I knew is not a surprise. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor in the eye and tell them you will suffer worse. If you are serving Jesus Christ, there are things he must allow you to suffer. The Bible says, and they learn to obedience by suffering. Jesus himself. Learn to obedience through what? If our master learned to obey by suffering, how about me? I posted something on Facebook. I know some of you are not following. Amen. And I said I prayed for strength. Did you see that post I did? How many people saw that post I did? We thank God. How many people saw the post I did? On my prayer that God answered. It is well in Jesus' name. I understand you. I was once where you are. <clears throat> when you come where I am, you will adjust. Amen. <clears throat> I prayed for strength. God gave me a problem to address. As I'm handling that thing, I'm getting my strength. I told God I want peace. God gave me people who don't even care for myself to deal with. I'll make sure they have peace so that I draw my peace from them. I say, God, I need somebody who show me love. Not as a wife, but as a pastor. With all the responses, God answered my prayer. Father, I need strength. He said, handle this one. When you finish, you'll be strong. I pray you go and check. I know some of us, we are not friends on Facebook. Some, you are not following our Facebook. But I pray, I've already told you. Mark 10 verse 35 through verse 40. Know for certainty if you are following Jesus Christ, problems will come your way. There are those, get used to them. Can I tell you something today? Can I tell you something today? There are issues you will make a decree and declaration and they will be sorted. Look at me in the eye. There are issues at your decree, at your declaration. They will do what? They will be sorted. There are issues that you have to physically close a door or spiritually for it. And there are issues you will close your eyes. Okay, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. There are doors by a word of mouth when you declare they will open for you. Are you listening? There are doors that you must physically open. And there are doors you must behave like they don't exist and close your eyes and... You know what I said? You have de declared it's not opening. You have tried to push physics up. Close your eyes. Behave like nothing is exam. Smash it. I spoke to somebody with wisdom. So not every door you declare... Ye door, open. Not every door are open by a declaration. There are those that you must know what do I do to open it physically. And there are those who behave like they don't exist. Close your eyes. And say they say there's a door here. To me, there's no door. Did anybody get what I said? 10.35 of Mark. What does it say? And James and John James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. We want you, Pastor Robert, to do for us whatever we want. If you want us to follow you as a pastor, make sure you do our bidding. And okay. he said to them, But he answered them and said, What do you want me to do for you? What is this that you are asking for? They said to him, Uh-huh. Grant us that we may sit one on your right hand. As brothers, we want to be the most senior after you. And the other on your left in your glory. James on this side. Brother on this side. Uh-huh. But Jesus said to them. Jesus looked at them in the eye and asked them a question. You do not know what you ask. This question is sounding easy, but you don't know the weight behind it. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Simple. 
and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. These are words that doesn't carry no more. It's not as easy as you hear it. Are you able to drink from the cup I'm about to drink from? Are you able to, do you have muscles to carry abuse like I'm being abused? If people begin to talk against you the way they talk against me, I, will you still be standing by me? Are you able to sleep without food and get what you are supposed to eat and give somebody else? Examples. So Jesus asked them, are you able to carry the cross I'm carrying? Because you being cl close to me as Jesus means you have to go through baptism or go through. Carry the cross I carry. Because you can't be close to me when you don't carry nothing, when you don't go through nothing. And they said, but Jesus, okay. And the baptism with the baptism that I'm baptized with. Uh huh. Next. They say to him, We are able. We are able. <laughs> so Jesus said to them, Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink the cup that I drink. If you are sure, then you will drink from the cup I drink. And with the baptism I am baptized with. Oh, today I don't know if anybody. Baptized. I don't know if anybody will hear what I'm preaching. As a disciple of Jesus, if you are deadly committed, there are things you must go through to benefit from the things you are believing God to give you away. Jesus said, I am already your master, but I know there is a cup I must drink from. I know there is a baptism that I must undergo. Now you who is serving as a disciple, are you ready? Because if you have to be very close, then you must have to go through. Somebody asked me a question. I said it last year and I will repeat it this year. Man of God, what in life would you not want to start again if an opportunity were to be given? When I said what I don't want to start again in my life if, God, if I'm given opportunity is ministry. And the reason why I will start business, I will sell charcoal, I will do anything else. I can even apply and run for police. I can do military. I can do anything. I can carry guns, shoot, boom, boom. I can do anything, but I cannot start ministry again. And they asked me why, sir. Because I'm in ministry. They say, I say, sir, ministry made friends and ministry made them my enemies, people I never knew. Ministry brought people that I did not come from with them from the same village and I helped. And the same people left me and brought feces and put on my face, ministry. Ministry has made me disagree with my parents, ministry. Made me disagree with my sister and my brother, ministry. Ministry has made me to lose what was supposed to help me personally. For people who don't even care. Ministry. Ministry is the reason why I know I can be stupid. I thought I was a wise man. Ministry has exposed how yeah, yeah can be. Ministry has made me go without food and make somebody eat. And after eating what I was supposed to eat, they came back with the energy of the food I was supposed to eat to get to abuse me. The energy I was supposed to be the one having. Now they are the ones having. Now they are using it to abuse me. Ministry. Ministry has taught me you can give somebody a phone. They will put their line and use that phone to block you. Ministry. Ministry has taught me you can take somebody to school. And they will learn with your own money. And after taking them to school, they will use your education, your money to go and work somewhere else and tell those people how stupid you are. Ministry. Ministry has taught me to bring people from the village, bring them to Nairobi, make them to understand how to survive in this city and tell people how useless I am. Ministry. If I wasn't in ministry, I couldn't have gone through this. I've given people my suit and my shoe and I've walked naked. And they were covering their body with the cloth which was supposed to originally be mine. And they are telling people how useless I am. Ministry. I've gone to hospital and paid hospital bill for a woman and the child. After they came out of the hospital, they left church. And they went and said that pastor is not a man of God, he's an occultic man. I went and buried a daughter of a woman that the husband ran away from. Mama is here. The husband said, 
you have gave birth to a child that is physically handicapped in my family is a bad man I can't allow that to happen the man ran away I myself went I have the pictures I went and buried the woman took the child from the morgue pay everything to Langata after burying the child the woman left this church and went and talked against me saying I'm an occultic man after borrowing money ministry ministry that have taken loans to make sure that things are running and people begin to say that I'm meeting church money well I'm taking loans to sort issues of the church ministry so I told them if there is anything I cannot start again in my life is ministry my brothers who did not start ministry they have not gone through what I've gone through but I'm younger by, to them by age but I know as a disciple I have to go through it so I get used to ministry <clears throat> ministry has made men and women that were kneeling down before me force me to kneel down for them so that they can stand as I'm kneeling they are saying you can't stand as I'm talking me who you are kneeling to before yesterday now I must kneel down for you to talk ministry as a disciple I have to drink from the same cup and go through the same baptism but if anything was to be started again not ministry but for you to sit by my right hand side there is a cup to drink and I believe as a disciple of Jesus God will give us grace to be able to go through what we have to go through to win I said it yesterday or yesterday but one of our posts and I said this don't give up you may not know what you are giving up while you are giving up did I say it for those who follow our Facebook I said don't give up you may never know what you are giving up while you are giving up I've slept in the forest crying for members praying the whole night shouting at the top of my voice I woke up in the morning, all my ribs are paining me. I don't have a voice anymore. And I woke up in the morning, the same member was crying with his name on the mountain. He's the same member who wrote me a text that broke me down. Ministry. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, there is a cup. You may not drink from my cup, but you may have a different one to drink from. Am I talking to somebody here? When we talk about discipleship, I'm the senior disciple in this ministry. And I know by reason of my seniority, I must carry a bit of heavy work. Number four, as a disciple of Jesus, be ready to sacrifice. Be ready to sacrifice. Sacrifice of your time sacrifice of your substance sacrifice of your leisure time I told mama every year we celebrate anniversary of our marriage we go out and we go and have fun and come back and ministry needs money can we sacrifice our leisure and maybe we celebrate the 10th one these other ones whatever we would have used let's use it for ministry I'm not like she's here I told her we are not going to go out and have dinner and enjoy when the house of the Lord is in desolate. Let's build the work of God. God will pay us back as a sacrifice. Ministry. Because we are disciples. I'm talking as a father. Listen to me carefully. There is a cup that you must drink from for you to carry a crown. If you are not willing to drink from that cup, you are not ready to carry that crown. There is a baptism you must undergo. If you are not ready for that baptism, there is a crown you are not ready for. Psalm 50 verse number 5 through verse 8. Write it down. We are not reading because of time. I'm, I have a lot to address today. 50 verse 5 through verse 8. Be ready to sacrifice. <clears throat> if you are a true disciple of Jesus, sacrifice your time. Sacrifice your resources. Sacrifice was supposed to give you joy and leisure for the sake of the kingdom. 
Sacrifice for the kingdom. Give yourself to it. Sometimes people give you money which you're supposed to use for your own family. I know some of us here, you cannot even skip one of your birthday celebrations. You cannot skip one of your anniversary. But the same God we sacrifice for is the same God that is sustaining that marriage. So we prefer his sustainability for our celebration. Amen. So that we have reason to celebrate 10 years. Pick some wisdom from this. What is the benefit of celebrating every year? And I thank God if there is ability. And that marriage cannot be kept for 10 years or for 20 years. Do you know what tomorrow waits for you? Have you entered into the archive of eternity and be able to open the books of life? What is written about your marriage and about your future? It is God who knows that. So make sure you put more into him because he's the one who has what you don't know. Let him go ahead and address your worries. When you get there, it's already sorted. I thought I'm talking to some few people here. Am I communicating now? Sacrifice if you want to be a true disciple. They were flogged. After being flogged, they still sacrificed to go back. Knowing very well they are going to be flogged again, but it was a sacrifice. A true disciple of Jesus Christ is ready to go extra mile. I don't know how to sleep in my house, whether sick or sleepy, and there is a church going on on Sunday. I've never known it in my life. On Wednesday, last this week, I was preaching in Thika last night. It was this week on Wednesday. I came back to my house and mama looked at me and she pitied me. We were on the ground working with Akina, Pasa, and the rest of us the whole day. And I left there, ran for meetings, came back, rushed to Majakos Junction, came back, went to Karen, for, came back, went to the, entered the house, changed, rushed to Thika and go Liba deep after thicker town. Went and preached there the whole night. In the morning, I'm at Gidurai 44, attending to something. The whole day, I've not slept, I've not taken shower, I've not eaten. The whole day, I was running for the kingdom's sake. Came back in the evening, I was feeling sick. But all of it, I was even the one sponsoring financially. I didn't ask for money. I was the one who gave money. They say this pastor has money. I don't have money. I have God. And I know everything I'm doing is a seed. I don't want my children to go through what I went through. Because my father was once a pastor. I don't want the cycle to repeat itself. Listen to me. Learn if you're a disciple. There are things you must know how to do today for posterity. There is difference between pros prosperity and posterity. You can be prosperous but not posterious. Whatever you do today might, must be able to stand the test of time. As a disciple. Because the devil wants to fight everything you do for you to be a failure. So that you don't have a motivation for you to continue serving. Number five. Be loyal to the man of God and to the vision God gave him at all times. Be loyal at all times. Loyal at all times. If you are a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Loyalty. At all times. At all times. Revelation chapter 2. At all times. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Be loyal at all times. Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. Don't be afraid for what you're about to suffer. Meaning you are being prepared, there will be a suffering. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. He will throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for 10 days. You will suffer for some time. But, you, but if you remain faithful even when facing death. If you remain faithful even when facing death. Meaning... Will, meaning there is nothing that is stronger than death that should remove you out of being faithful. If you should be faithful, then even unto death. So if death is the most strong and most feared thing, then there is nothing else 
that should shift your attention. If that should not shift your attention, then mean there's nothing else. Uh, am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Even until death, you will suffer for 10 days, but if you remain faithful even when facing death, I will give you what? The crown of life. Oh, somebody shout and receive the crown. You don't receive the crown because you go to church, because you can stand the test of time. A lady came to this ministry the year 2018, 2019 and she came to my office. I used to have an office here, I'm about behind here. I know some of you knows it. The first block, the second block, room number, first one on the right. Used to be my office. That was the first office. So I had a mirror inside. Somebody blessed me with a mirror. I think from, from Hilton Hotel. Somebody brought, brought me a nice mirror from Hilton. I used to have a member there who was a daughter of the minister. She brought a very nice mirror. I put it in my office. So at least my tie can be correct before I go to service. Hallelujah. And just check if your coat and your jacket is in order before somebody will say, Papa, check your zip or something. This lady left when they said that mirror is what I'm using to drop people to church. I met her last year without 12 teeth. She, I believe she lives here now. I've seen her here frequently. And the last time I met her, she six here, six here, removed. So I asked her, my daughter, how far? He said, man of God, long story. I said, no, don't mind. I'm your pastor. You know, you can tell me. I don't mind how long, make long short. He said, I got an accident. And he hit my mouth in the next seat. And that's how I lost my front teeth. I said, when was this? He said, three weeks when I left your church. I had to remove mirror from my office because of her. Listen, as a disciple, be careful. The church is not happy again. The church is not happy again. We only want to take the side of you shall drive a car. You see, you are not shouting a man. You shall own a house. The car you did not buy. A house you did not build. You will suffer. Shout out here. As a disciple. <laughs> I preached on it last time. You had to go through it. God will bless you. God will bless you. You had to. Now listen to me. Job said what I feared most has come upon me. Can I surprise you? What you fear most, you will face it. Oh. I have learned to face present worship leaders who came to me and could not stand looking at me in the eye. When I talk, they, sl they sleep down, they prostrate straight. They say, Papa, I cannot behold your face. When you are talking, I cannot stand facing you. Later, they stood and faced me and wanted to even bring my eyes out. I got used to it. Am I talking? If you are a disciple. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Elder is not happy again. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? As a disciple of Jesus, sometimes God will allow you to go through this to test you, to prove you, to know what is in your heart. Somebody will just come and tell you, I saw Pastor Robert smoking weed. Are you following? And so that you can be tested, but because you are found weak, you say, hey, I have heard him saying he used to smoke before. So it's not a new thing. He can smoke again. Before you know it, you have joined them. Am I talking to somebody here? You have failed the test. In this life, I said, I will repeat, it's full of tests. Make sure you identify what is the test before me now. And how will I pass it? Because there is a crown waiting for those who will survive. 
Look at your neighbor in the eye. Ask them, are you still here? I know some has left me already. Ask them, are you still here? Ask them, are you sure? No, no, touch them. Touch them like this. Some are wonder, are you sure? Learn to be loyal. Loyalty is best proved when things are tough. Loyalty is best proved when your pastor is poor and he has no money. Loyalty is proved when people talk about your pastor in a negative way. Loyalty is tested when your pastor is going out of running out of money and food and you have to feed him with the little you have. Loyalty is tested when the church is going through waves and turmoils and, and issues and you have to stand with the church. Loyalty is tested when everything is not going right. Because when everything is going right, everybody is loyal. Everybody is shouting, Papa, prophesy. Everybody is saying, Go deeper, man of God, I can hear you talk. Your servant is listening. When everything is correct, I'm a daddy. But when everything be good to go wrong, I'm a daddy. That's loyalty. You see, like now we want to move church. And a lot of money is needed. And we have to raise money from every Tom, Dick, and Harry. This is when I know who is my real daughter and my real son. Because this is the right time for people to leave church. And look for reasons to just leave. And just get reasons why they will not come to church on Sunday. And their mother can be sick and their grandfather. And before you know it, we can say, Isha, what are in the new place? Say, prophet, I knew you would make it. I knew, I know you are going far. Pastor is surprised. Am I following? Now, this is the time somebody will just be dodging, 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 dodging. No service. Thursday, they don't come. Sunday, they're not coming. Once we move, they say, see glory. We know you are God. Must supply. Ah. While he was supplying, be part of the solution. Shout I hear. <laughs> Admin is amused. Am I following? Are you following what I'm saying here? Be part of what? The solution. Sometimes the word I'm happy for you carry envy in the inside. Not everybody who tells you I'm happy for you is truly happy for you. Or let me talk to some people here. Can I surprise you? Not everybody that tells you my sister I'm happy for you, they are truly happy for you. Sometimes the word I'm happy carry this sometimes some disguise. But hard times prove real friends. I tell you every day, we have not come this far by kilometers. The far we have come with you is in terms of impact. What impact have you brought into the ministry? Is that how many kilometers? How far? This far. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails. This is the song that the Lord used to give me strength every day. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. tears in my eyes. Let me, let me finish this thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord has been my strength when I'm weak. I get to a place when I don't have anybody to call and I call on him and he answers. I've been to a place when I don't have anybody to console me and he be the one to comfort me. 
I've been to a place where I don't have anybody to cry to. Because I can't stand before my wife and begin to cry. But I go before him and he still appreciate my tears. Last time we went on the mountain with some few people here. And you agree with me, you had me shouting for all over one hour. Just telling God, shame will not be our portion, if you can remember. If you can remember. And I told God this year I will not see shame. And anybody that is planning shame to come my way, they will carry my shame. That was my prayer. A matter of somebody here. But as at yesterday, somebody came and was offering us a 1,000 seater dome tent. You know, we are praying for 500 seater. And a man came and said, we have told you need a tent. We have 1,000 seater already. We just sign this, sign that, and we have it done. I said, if you had told me two weeks ago, but still, we have time. I will share with you guys. Am I communicating something? God knows how to do his things. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. Anybody that is planning shame for you, they will carry your shame. I say anybody pr praying that you should regret, they will carry your regret. Anybody praying that you shall fail, they shall fail your failure. Shall I receive it? Before the end of this year, you shall have a tangible testimony. I say you shall have a tangible testimony. As a disciple of Jesus, you shall have a tangible testimony. Shall I receive it? Be a good ambassador of the vision. I challenge you in the WhatsApp group, people should share the flyer. It was intentional. Only few did. Only some few chose not to do. Because your Facebook is personal. Amen. Be a good disciple of this ministry. It was a good challenge. But I know your Facebook is personal. But the question is, is there anything personal about you that doesn't involve God? What, what is the difference when it comes to your social media platform? If you can even talk to your parents-in-law, even your pastor, about even your sex life in marriage, if he's not doing well, what is so private about your social media that you can't use it to glorify God? No man of God, this is personal. You can't take to me to post on my Facebook, honestly. What is so personal about Robert that is different from God? And that's why everything about my page is about church. Because church is me, I'm church. God is in me, I'm in God. We are two in one, we are one in one. You take God from me, I become nothing. I'm nobody with, without him. It is God plus me that make me something. Am I communicating something? Be a good ambassador. What you love, you share. What you don't love, you don't share. And I even wrote it there. But some still read and never did nothing about it. <clears throat> this far we have come. The Lord has been on our side. Listen. If you are a true disciple of Jesus, represent him well. Never preach what you can't drink. Never serve somebody food you can't eat. It will be suicidal because if they die, they will say you poisoned them. So how can you invite somebody to a church you are not happy about? How can you talk to somebody about Christ you are not motivated about? You must be a good ambassador. Look at your neighbor in the eye. Tell them from today, receive grace to be a good ambassador. By their fruit, you shall know them. Amen. Is it not the Bible? It's not by words, by actions. Fruit means what they do. Because human beings doesn't bring mango and orange. They, through actions, you will know. Hallelujah. There was a day they were going to battle. And Israel gathered in tens of thousands. And the Lord told them, I'm not going to fight with that number. Reduce it. He said, how can I tell people who have come this far to go back home? He said, take them to the river. Let them drink. Those who drink like this, they will be put this side. Those who drink like this, they qualify. Oh, Robert, you're talking a lot of wisdom. And that's how God chose those who are going to fight for him. And he used by hundreds of people to show his might against thousands. And he gave them a strategy and he said, go and sit somewhere until you see me bring white wind. Don't come out to fight. And when they came out, there were stones that came from heaven and killed their enemies. They never fought with their sword. 
Hallelujah. I know you are trying to read what I'm saying. Are you following what I'm saying here? I pray you will not be found out. Look at him, man. I pray you will not be found out. I pray you will not be found out. Next year, during our anniversary in February, which I believe we are doing in our new church, I'm preparing some presents. I don't like surprises. That's why I'm communicating. Amen. And I've communicated with somebody who is doing for me some trophies. These trophies are for two categories of people. Those who have stayed by me long enough, that longevity in itself proves that there is something in me that they value. And I know how many they are. And those who have made impact in this ministry for the shortest time they've been around. <clears throat> Don't get offended when you are not the one who will appear in that list. It means it will challenge you to do more next year. Because we are we celebrating our new place. Hallelujah. You're not saying amen again. You're not saying amen again. So I'm believing God for that. I'm already working on it. And God is helping us. I realize it's not so much. Be a good ambassador. A true disciple, they make a vision happen. The true disciple, they make a vision happen. 2762 of Matthew, from the same New King James Version. They make a vision happen. 27 verse 62 of Matthew. I was sharing with one of us here about this. I made it part of this, my preaching. Matthew 27 62. Mm. We will worship him one more time. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord here. God will heal some people and do some good things to us. Because we are a student. One, two, three, go. Let's read all of us, those who can see and have it in the Bible. One, two, three, go. On the next day, uh -huh. which followed the day of preparation, okay. the chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate. Okay. Saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive. We remember while Jesus was still alive. How he, the deceiver said, after three days I will rise. He said how he deceived, how that deceiver, how that liar said, after three days he will rise. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Make sure that tomb is well guarded. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away. Uh huh. And say to the people, and tell us tomorrow. He has risen from the dead. <laughs> so the last deception will be worse than the first. The last will be worse. Now hold it there. Let me show you revelation here. I know we are used to one dimension of this. The work of a disciple is to make the vision happen. This pilot and these people and the Pharisees knows this principle. And that's why they told Elisha, where that we dwell is not good. Allow us to go to the river, cut timber, and come back and build the house of the Lord. You remember the story? Before the head of the axe went into the water and the miracle happened. You know the story? Now the work of the disciples is to make miracle. I mean what their, their vision said come to pass. So they know. If the tomb is not guarded well, if Jesus is not resurrected by God, disciples will steal his body and tell us he's resurrected. The message is, it is their work as disciples to make what their master said happen. So they are waiting for God. If God did not make it happen, they make it happen. This side is not here. Am I communicating something? It is their work. Papa said. So we are waiting on God. If God did not do it, we are doing it. The bottom line is either by God or by design. So they knew it. So they put police there. Now you see it now. Because they know very well if they don't put police, they will come and steal his body. Thank God he resurrected him without even the people. Are we following what I'm saying here? It is a work of the disciple to make vision happen. 
My work is to make it plain on paper that them that read it can use it and run with it. But your work is to make it. If God does it, glory to him. If he doesn't do it, we do it. So Satan must make sure he guards it so well. So the only hand of God can take it from him. I ask anybody, do you hear that? Is that so deep? Is the work of the disciple to make the vision do what? So either God resurrects Jesus or we hide him. We can't take shame. We will take the body here. It's Joseph of Arimathea. is our brother. He's the one who gave us the tomb. We will ask him for back door. We will collect the body, pass through back door and hide it somewhere. Tell him, hey, I'm a fofoka. I'm a fofoka and celebrate. And then we go and handle the rotting body. But thank God he picked him before shame came. God will handle your, your issue. I said God will handle your issue. Before shame comes your way, God will handle your issue. I say he will handle your issue. He will handle your issue. So the disciples make vision. And that's why the policemen were at the gate. Because they knew that Jesus would resurrect. But to them, they didn't believe in the power of God. They believed in the disciples removing him and hiding him and saying it happened. Are you following what I'm saying here? I was listening to a testimony of Pastor Chule. We met the other day at House of Grace and he told us that when they were raising money for the Arema Fest for next year, four of his sons came and told him, Papa, you are bringing shame to us. How much are you talking about? Four of his sons. I was told this before, but he told me by word of mouth. They said, Papa, tell us the budget for next We don't want to hear you raising money. We will sort it. Disciples. Papa has a vision, they make it happen. It shall be your portion. It shall be your portion. Amen. If you don't say, Men, I suspect you, I say, It shall be your portion. Amen. I pray God is going to bless you so much that this year you will not allow me to ask for money. He said, But those are small monies. Don't, don't mention those monies. What is it? Is it 300,000? No, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Let, let me handle it. You, know, you are so blessed that even it's shame to hear people, you know, contributing one, two, three. Are we communicating something? It is the work of the disciples to see vision happen. Praise God forever. I was listening to Pastor Paul in nature and he said they are building a flyover from the airport to the church which needs millions, hundreds of millions of naira. So he said they were, when he stood in the church to raise the money, he said a family sat with other two families, there were three families, and they came and told him, Papa, how much is that flyover? He said it's a dual carriage flyover from the airport Two and a half kilometers. You know how much that can cost. The road, the complete road is two and a half kilometers plus the flyover. He said the three families came and said, man of God, we don't like it when we are seated in the same church and you are asking money for that thing. We have agreed as three families that you go and work with your engineers. Give us a quote. We will foot it by ourselves. I pray this will be your testimony. Oh, you see it's looking like a miracle. I pray this will be your testimony. You cannot do it if you don't have it. The first thing is God will put the money in your hands. And then put the heart. Because you can have money but we don't have the heart. That's the risk. Are you talking about what I'm saying here? Ha! When he said that I rose up. I looked at my pocket. I saw I had some small seed. And when I put on the altar I said God. Even in my church bring me those daughters and sons. God can turn you to one. God can make you one. A disciple make vision. Number eight. Know as a disciple that one day you will also become a leader. So any behavior you do today is a seed you are sowing. Just know that you one day become a leader. So anything you do today you know is a seed you are sowing. You must not be a leader of a church like me, but you will be a leader of your own children. The one day when your son will come and stand and want to beat you, please remember what Pastor Robert once preached. The day you try to talk to your daughter and she tells you, I'm a woman like you. And she wants to challenge you. 
Remember once Pastor Robert preached this. As a disciple, make your master's work easier. Because tomorrow you'll be a leader and you want people to make your work easier. You may be a leader at work, a leader in your family, a leader in your community, a leader anywhere. But what you do to others is the seed you sow. Do everything that when harvesting time comes, you can harvest without tears. You are not going to be harvesting and you are crying. You harvest and you celebrate. And if you have to cry, it might be tears of joy. Discipleship. Look at your neighbor and tell them discipleship. Number nine and the second last one. Disciples stand up and fight for their leader. They don't fight their leader. Revelation 12 verse 7. Disciples fight for their leader. They don't fight their leader. You fight for Jesus. You don't fight Jesus. You fight for your ministry. You don't fight your ministry. You fight for your pastor. You don't fight your pastor. As a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Stand up and fight for. Don't fight the, the grace. Because the grace you fight will turn you into grass. And what broke up in heaven? Chapter 12, verse 7. And what broke up out in heaven? Mm. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. Who fought the dragon? Michael and the angels. Did God himself fight? Who stood to fight? The angels. When there is a problem in this ministry, you are the one expected to help me sort it. Don't be the one adding paraffin. Don't be the one adding fuel. By you adding paraffin and fuel, you'll be fighting me directly without knowing. You are supposed to stand in and fight for me as your man of God. For he that receives him, receives he that sends me. Jesus said so. Meaning he that fights him, fight me that sent him. If war can break up in heaven, war can start in Shalom. It's not an exception. Heaven is more stronger than this church. And if Satan can take battle to the doorstep of God in heaven, ha, he can bring it to the pulpit. You're not listening to what I'm teaching here. But a true disciple, they stand there, you will not do it. You will not do it. There was a time there was a scandal with a pastor in this country. I know many of us know this, so I don't want to mention names. And so, cameramen and police came to the pastor during service, trying to harass the pastor. Daughters and sons fought for their pastor. It was taken on camera everywhere. And people were saying, why are they fighting for him? They are, they are, they are true disciples. You don't help an enemy to fight your grace. You stand with the grace and fight the enemy. The Bible say, and Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. They never fought God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit. It was the angels who did the work. That is, that's discipleship. He said, Papa, somebody was talking nonsense. We have handled it. God bless you. Amen. Not that somebody was talking nonsense. And you are also found with them talking the same nonsense. Am I communicating something? They say, Bible say, war broke in heaven. War can break in my family. If war was in heaven. Between me and mama, we can disagree. It's very simple. If heaven can be war. Between me and my biological parents, we can disagree. Am I communicating something? But the Bible say, war unto them that bring that division. It can happen, but war unto them. I pray you receive the spirit of a fighter. So when people want to fight the ministry, you can come and fight back. Praise God forever. It was a day I was doing Facebook a lot. And somebody keep coming on my Facebook and abusing me, abusing me. So I have a daughter in the U.S. Who is very loyal to this ministry till now. And I stood by me. So she told me, Prophet, what I've decided to do, I've decided to be following whatever you do. My work is to delete every stupid comment. 
and block them for you. So what she does, she screenshot and after the broadcast, she will send me all the nonsense people are saying. I did not see one. She was handling them as they come. A true disciple. But if it's not a true disciple, they will see the say, you are saying sense. What this woman is commenting can carry some sense. So they will go and reply. He said, I agree. Amen. I conquer. Correct. Tell them. A true daughter, a true son. You see it, you block it. You see it, you delete it. If you don't have those powers, you tell the admin, remove them. Or give me those powers if you don't see them. Jump very quickly. Praise God forever. Oh, you are prophesying, you are lying. You are not prophesying, you are prophet lying. You say a prophet lying, psh, block. You don't wait for it before you corrupt other people. Oh, you are calling yourself a prophet. You have the Nonsense. Don't give it time. A true daughter, a true son.